Let's open our Bibles this morning to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. He is so good. You know, you want to know how to get a breakthrough when there's a mess? Pray. You want to know how to have peace? Middle of the storm? Yeah. Praise. Yeah. You want to know how to get full when you feel empty? Praise. Yeah. Everything begins with praise. Your victory begins with praise. You know what Joshua did when they finally crossed over? Yeah. Yeah. And they came up to Jericho, this fortified wall. Who they send out first? It wasn't the guys with the spears. It wasn't the chariots. Basically, the worship team. It was the priests. They led the. They led to. They were led to victory by putting the praises first. By putting God first. And that's what we're going to do today. First Thessalonians chapter five. Verses 12 through 14. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to, rec uh, to give recognition to those who labor among you and lead you in the Lord and admonish you and to regard them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. Oh, Y'all hear that? Be at peace. With who? Among yourselves, brothers and sisters. And maybe if we got together and praise first, we could be we could have peace. Verse 14. And we exhort you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle, comfort the discouraged, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Let me let me read that last part again. And we exhort you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle, comfort the discouraged, help the weak. And here's the last one sometimes we got problems with, including Vic Coleman. Be patient with everyone. And I notice that as, as I've gotten older, my patience has gotten shorter. <laughs> Come, come home with six grandkids in the house, I'm telling you, <laughs> we're getting close to zero. <laughs> but you know, sometimes I go back to my office, or well, in this case, they took over my office. I go back to the back porch, <laughs> my safe haven, <laughs> and I just say, okay, Lord, I'm just going to take a moment out for you. And that's what we're going to do here. That's what we're going to do here. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to give you thanks, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, Father. And Father, thank you for this opportunity to just take time out to praise you. And Father, we know that the praise is, is the key to victory. The praise is the key to peace. The praise is the key to lack, Father. And, and really, the praise is really just the key to our getting a closer personal relationship with you, Father. And that's where it all begins. That's what you want. And so, Father, we just want to lift our hands and lift our eyes and lift our voices and lift our hearts to you so that you can be glorified, Father, in everything we do. And we want to start our week out right, Father, with praise. And, Father, we just want to give you thanks and praise and let the whole church say amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The band tells me, they say, Pastor, we just be ready to get in our groove. So, amen. They wanted to get their calisthenics in this morning. Grab your Bibles real quick. Amen. I'll, I'll endeavor not to be before us long. I want to talk to us this morning about a place and a people of grace. A place and a people of grace. You should never come to church and get cut. Church should be a place of healing. Should be a place of restoration. 
I don't care how, how deep in the hole you are. You should always see the house of God as a place to come to be restored. I'm not the preacher that hides. Amen. There have been seasons in my life where I felt like giving up. There have been seasons in my life where I messed up and should have gave up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm that preacher. And I want to just encourage you, amen, to know that we want this place to be a place of grace. Uh, and this morning, I just want us to look at a couple of verses, and I'm going to try to get us out of here, amen, in time to fellowship at your local eatery, amen. Tip the people well when you get there. Amen. Especially if you mentioned you was just at Higher Expectations Church. Amen. Now, if you ain't go tip, tell them you was somewhere else, you know. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, starting at verses 12 through 15, I want us to read these verses. I have more, but I'll read just these few. It says, Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to give recognition to those who labor among you and lead you in the Lord and admonish you. And to regard them highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we exhort you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Comfort the discouraged and help the weak. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient with everyone. Be patient with everyone. See it that no one repays evil for evil. To everyone or to anyone, but always pursue what is good for one another and for all. You may be seated in the presence of our life-changing king. I know some guys are translating, and I just hope you, you'll follow along with me. But I want to, I, I just want to speak to us as a body this morning. I want us to, I want us to leave here encouraged. I want us to know that God is at work in the midst of us. And, 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 and I want you to know, amen, no matter how, 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 how much pressure you feel in the moment, that God has tremendous grace available to you. And, I, and, and here's what I want us to walk away with this morning. I want to state it up front. I want, I want you to walk away knowing that you're not in this life fight alone. One of, the, one, 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 one of the devices of the enemy is to make you believe that you're in this fight alone. That's why our culture is all upside down. Everybody is against everybody. And if you're a conservative Christian, they call you a fundamentalist. If you, if, 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 if you hold to some values and views, even people within the church are attacking one another. Uh, but, 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 but what we fail to do often is to uh, uh, give each other the same grace that God has extended to us. We, we, we fail to give God the same, we fail to give each other the same loving attitude that the Lord Jesus Christ has given to each of us. Now listen, I love a good fight. Let me just be honest, I love a good fight. I, 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 see, I'm sorry, but some of my viewers don't understand. Let me, let, me, let me rephrase that. I love to fight. Amen. I love to fight. I, I, listen, listen, listen. Listen, I often tell the brothers, hey, amen, if I got to come to your house after midnight, get out of my bed, I'm bringing the boxing gloves. One of us need to have some knots on our head. I need to have some on my head for being crazy enough to get out of my bed, but you need to have some because I had to come to your house at midnight and get you together. I love a good fight, hey, amen. But, 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 but here's the deal. Uh, 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 all fights are not necessary. The older I get, the more conversational I'm becoming. I, 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 I learned, a man, that, 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 that things I used to fight about when I was a young man, I, I probably did not, I, I, I probably could have handled that situation a whole lot different. 
I'm, I'm, I'm learning this. Here. I'm, I'm learning that 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 God, Amen. Don't God, God's expectation is not that we that, that that we attack. In fact, Galatians says that if we bite and devour one another, we'll destroy each other. You say, Pastor, where are you going? That, you, 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 you quoted this text. You kind of went off script. Here, here, here's where I'm going. Uh, when I'm down and out, when I'm struggling, when I can't find my way, you know what I need, amen? I need somebody to come alongside of me, amen, and walk with me and, and, and to cheer me on and, and, and to encourage me, amen. Uh, 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 I, don't need, I don't need somebody else when I'm down, amen, is to put your, put your foot on my throat. I need you to give me a helping hand, amen. Paul's writing to the church of Thessalonica. It's a young church. Uh, uh, they, they're, they're, they're probably not even a good two years old, and, and they're under this great persecution. And Paul has already been exhorting them in their faith. And then he, he comes to this place with them where Paul wants to encourage them, amen, to keep on keeping on. That's what I miss about the old saints. The old saints say, man, you could come to church dirty, and they just tell you, keep on keeping on, baby. Just come on back next week. These new saints are a little different. These new saints are social. They social media. They want to put all your business out, amen. They, 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 the new saints, amen, they, 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 they want to put the chokehold on you. See, but I want High Expectations Church to be a place of, of, of exceeding grace. I want it to be a place where folk can come and get restored. I don't care what your sin is, amen. I don't care what you're struggling with. I don't care what you're going through. I want you to know, amen, that God is for you, amen. Now, what I got to work on, is getting the people to be for you. Amen. And, 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 and because, hey, listen, my, my dude Willie always told me, Willie Moore, he always told me, he says, listen, God is amazing, but his people got problems. And so, y'all mind, just, 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 just work with me for a few minutes here. You know, I, I, I want us to understand that, that God has released grace to enter into our space, to reconcile us first and foremost to him, amen, a loving and long-suffering Savior, while at the same time, grace has called us to be reconciled together to our brothers and sisters. Can you stop saying this? I'm tired of her. I'm tired of him. Because God's tired of you, but he keeps putting up with you. Amen. Amen. So, 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 listen, 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 listen. We still dealing with you. Why can't you deal with somebody? We all walked in this building this morning with a chest full of junk. We all walked in here, amen, with mask on. We, we smell good. We look good. But if we peel back the onion of your life, we all messed up. That's why we need a savior. Amen. That's why we need a savior. Not a single one of us starting here in the pulpit got it together. Hmm. Not one of us got it together. Last night, I was trying to figure out how not to come to church this morning. <laughs> See? I like, Lord, listen. I said, Minister Davis is back. So he been off all month. Amen. And then he can come on in and just, hey. All yesterday we was giving our back. I was thinking in my head. I said, "Man, will Davis be mad with me if I tell him he got to preach tomorrow?" I got up. I, I you know I, I get up early. I was up. <coughs> maybe that's it right there. Maybe maybe that's it right there, right? So we all listen, listen, listen. We all got them days. We all got those days. We we all got those days where we just not feeling it. But can I say this to you? You can't have many of those days. Amen. Sometimes you got to not feel it and do it anyway. Sometimes, so, so, sometimes you got to, you, 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 sometimes you got to, you, you, you got to, you got to, you got to, you, 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 you got to feel like I want to hug the pillow. Sometimes you got to, you, you got to not feel it and say, but I'm going to press my way anyway, man. Sometimes you got to make up in your mind, amen. It ain't the best of circumstances, but I'm going to learn how to live with it anyway. So, so. We love grace because the definition we often use is the unmerited, unearned, undeserved, and can I say the unbelievable favor of God towards us who have sinned, shunned, and shamed the Lord. 
Amen. See, see, but, 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 but I love Romans 8 and 38, 39, which is our favorite verse. For we say, for we are persuaded, we're fully convinced that neither death, nor angels, nor present things, nor powers, nor heights, nor, nor things created, or, or, or nothing can separate us from the love of God. Listen, I'm all off script, so I might as well say it. Let me say this here to you. In Romans chapter 5, the Bible tells us, amen, that, that where sin abounds, grace is much more. Amen. Grace just doesn't save us. It sanctifies us. It, it sets us apart. It, 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 it causes us to serve. Grace is not just the thing that gets you into the kingdom. Grace is the fuel that allows you to live the life God has called you to. And so Paul here in his writing, look what he says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 and 13. Yep, I'm going to be quick. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 and 13, as Paul is closing his letter, he offers encouragement to the people of God, amen. He offers this encouragement because he wants them to understand as he closes the letter, amen, you're going to have to stick together. My mama had this rule. God bless her in heaven. My mama had this rule. If we was out, my sisters was out. Now, I was a little bitty dude. All my sisters, they got a little age on me, older than me. I ain't telling that age. I don't need them calling me. One of them be watching, saying, you said this. Now she's trying to check me like she the mama. Listen, and so, but, but here was our rule. If, 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 if one of my sisters got in a fight, it ain't going to never be a fair fight. Because my mama say, if all y'all there, y'all all jump on me. My mom, my, and, and if you came home and you ain't had no scratches on you, Lula may send you back out there by yourself to fight, amen. That's your lesson. So, 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 so I learned, listen, I learned a long time ago, listen, that if we in this, we in this together. We in this together. And so, and so, and so, listen, stop, 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 stop making believe that you can do this thing on your own because you can. Now, look what he says here in 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 and 13. He says, now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to give recognition to those who labor among you and lead you in the Lord and admonish you and to regard them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. We know we, we have a misconception. Here's the misconception. Can I talk about me for a minute? Here's the misconception. Can I talk about pastors? That leaders or pastors some kind have superpower while everybody else, amen, is operating on 12 votes. We, we have this misconception that, 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 that the preacher doesn't go through. But Paul says, in this her text, Paul says that, that, that you ought to give encouragement and recognition to those who lead you. When in fact, the truth is, leaders are fighting the same battle you're fighting while at the same time trying to lead you to the throne of God. We just as wounded as the people in the pews. You know, sometimes people come in and they say, Pastor, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I look at them and say, I don't know either. <laughs> Shucks. Ain't no sense of us playing games. Shoot, you don't know, I don't know. Let's take it to the Lord together. Come on, bow your big head. Let's pray. Let's see what the Lord got to say. Shucks, I, I ain't got the answer. Sometimes people ask me these deep people, I don't know the answer. I don't know. Man, let's get a dictionary, an encyclopedia or something. Let's get an inner link. Let's see, can we figure it out? I don't know. So I'm, listen. Listen, I'm just the one called. Listen, consider this here, Soul Shepherd Institute. 75% of pastors report extreme stress. Listen, 90% of them work 55 to 75 hours a week. 90% uh, of them are fatigued every week, right? 70% of them are grossly underpaid. Amen. Pay your preacher, preacher. Pay your preacher, preacher, people. Listen, and look what he says. Listen, listen. 80% believe their pastoral ministry has negatively impacted their families. Amen. Somebody say, you always somewhere with Sister Lee. Because listen, I'm, listen, if my marriage fall apart, I can't be your pastor no more. And if Sister Lee bounce, I'm out. Let me say this one more time so y'all get this. If sister, I came with her, I'm leaving with her. Remember your club days? You rolled in with your sweet honeydew, amen? Listen, I'm rolling out with her, amen? I came with her, I'm leaving with her, amen? Listen, listen, listen. We, we started this thing together. Now, if she roll, I'm rolling. You say, well, pastor, you're going to be in sin. We're going to be in sin together, amen? So while y'all praying for me, y'all better pray Sister Lee gets, got some act right in her. Because the Bible, listen, listen, see, and, 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 and we see that, but the Bible says that if a man can't take care of his, home, his own home, he's not fit to serve or lead the house of God. Amen. All these preachers, amen, bouncing on their wives and, 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 and leaving. How can I tell you to keep fighting when I'm giving up? That's why we all need grace. 
32 years of grace have kept my marriage together. Sister Lee has a reason every year to bounce on me. Because I'm crazy like that. I'm just being honest. I done lost enough money to buy all y'all houses. And she just be like, she, and, and listen, a good woman, this is what a good woman say, baby, we're going to get them next time. Now, do you want ramen noodles or pork and beans? <laughs> but when you live right, when you live right, my wife stayed with me on the promises that it's going to get better one day because I was living right. So listen, so listen. So, let me, so let, me, let me share this. Let me share this with you, right? The elders, our leaders here at the church, we live this principle, no big eyes and small U's. A few years ago, I was out of line, and the elders set me down. I didn't go look for another church. I took that, I took that as an opportunity of them shepherding my soul. We tell you, you, we tell you listen, we don't want to see all your stuff on Facebook. You act like y'all all up in my business. No, we're trying to shepherd your soul. We're trying to help you live this life. So listen, why should we love our leaders? For they labor, they put, they, they put in good work on our behalf for, for, for their leadership that they provide to the body, for their gentle admonishment they provide to us. If you can't love the leaders of your local church and submit to godly leadership, then you should find a church where you can. Because nobody's trying to hurt or harm you. We're trying to love you. I want to see you win. I want to see you with the promotion. I want to see you pull up in your nice whip, amen. I want to see you with the bigger house. Let me just deal with the material deals. But I want your marriage to be hot and on fire, amen. I want your kids to love Jesus, amen. Hey, listen, listen, I, I want you to do well. And at offering time, I want you to give. Just so you, won't, you, ain't, you, ain't, you, ain't, you ain't you ain't messed up, amen. Amen. Don't come in here with, with $500 Jordans on some alligator shoes and drop $5 in the offer. Give us those shoes. We'll put them on eBay, man. We'll make it work. <clears throat> Look what Hebrews 13, 17 says. Hebrews 13, 17 says this. It says this. Listen, when you get a chance, they say, obey your leaders and submit to them since they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account. I'm never running nobody away from the church. But if, but, but, but if we can't, if, 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 if you can't be as faithful as you need to be, that one day I have to stand before God. I don't want to be in heaven when you show up acting like treating you like y'all treat me in the grocery store, like y'all don't know me. Like they don't see me. They be looking all around. You come in, they dump, they dump their head. Huh? And don't let me catch you with your boo. I ain't never met a man. You straight up act like you don't know me. Huh? Like who that? Yeah, who that is? I roll up on you with your boo, hey man. You, I have a whole conversation. You just looking, looking all around like you Stevie Wanda or somebody. I don't know. Listen, it says, it says that they give a watch over your soul as one who has to give an account so they can do this with joy and not grief. For that would be unprofitable or not beneficial to you. Listen, child of God, you need to be part of a local church where you can learn and grow in your faith, where you can help somebody else, amen, where some people can care for you because you know left to yourself you are dangerous. I need the people of God because on my own, I'm dangerous. I can tear some stuff up. I can break some stuff up. I can mess some stuff up. Amen. But the brothers in my life, they, they provide me guardrails to live the life God has called me to live. So all that just to say, listen, encourage your pastor. Not just the sermon was good. Encourage your pastor. Amen. I tell the men all the time, we have men, I say, before I'm your pastor, I'm just Brian. I'm Lula Mae's baby boy. I'm a man just like you. I know, I know some of y'all who, who, some of y'all who, who, who deep church folk, y'all ain't used to hearing a preacher talk like that, but, you know, I put my pants on the same way every man in here put his pants on, amen. The, the only thing special about me is that God has placed his hand on me and called me pastor. 
Other than that, I, other than that, I, 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 I'm, 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 I, I may fall to the same deal that you fall to if I don't keep my hand in the master's hand. If, if, if the saints ain't praying for me. Let's move on. We, we, we in there together? Now, that was for me. That was for me. Now, listen, I, I, listen, I, took, not, I took 12 and a half minutes preaching on me. So, so now, somebody say, now yeah. it's our turn. There we go. There we go. There we go. Now, listen. Now, listen. Listen. Don't get nervous in the service now. Don't start squirming in your seat. Amen. Listen. Listen. Don't start nudging the people next to you. Amen. Listen. 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 See, so, so this is equal opportunity preaching. Amen. A little bit for you. Amen. And, well, a little bit for me and a whole lot for you. Let's go that way. Amen. Listen to what Paul says. Look what Paul says. Verse 14. I think this is as far as we're going to get today. Verse 14. Verse 14 encourages us to love and encourage one another. Look what it says. We exhort you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle, comfort those who are discouraged, help the weak, and be patient with everyone. Let me say that again. We exhort you, brothers and sisters, Paul. Paul is saying the preacher has a job, but you got a job. And your job, amen, your, your, your job is to be a saved, sanctified Miss Jenkins. Okay, pause. Ah, y'all all confused. There was a TV show called In Living Color. And when In Living Color was on, Miss Jenkins was the old nosy lady that stood up in the window that knew everybody's business. Right? And so, but see, see, but here's what God wants. He don't want you just to be nosy, amen, for the sake of being nosy. He wants you to be nosy for the sake, amen, of helping somebody along this journey. As my, as my, as my old aunt would say, along this Christian journey, amen. And so, and so, so listen, because listen, the pastor is not everywhere. Listen, y'all don't invite pastor to them parties. Amen. <laughs> y'all don't invite me to them parties. Amen. When y'all smoking cigars. Amen. And, 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 and dropping them back at Top Golf. Y'all ain't inviting pastor. <laughs> uh, listen, let, let, let's just go and be real about it. Listen, y'all ain't, y'all ain't inviting pastor. Y'all ain't inviting pastor. There's some, pl- some barbecue parties pastor don't get invited to. Amen. Y'all ain't inviting pastor to, to some of them things. And so, and so but, but y'all are inviting each other. Y'all all up in there, up in there, up in there, amen. And, since, and, and, and listen, and somebody ought to be spiritual enough to know and say, now, girl, that's a little off right there. That's a little bit, that's a little, hey, you need some, you need some more clothes on. Brother, put your shirt back on. You scaring us right now. Especially if you look like Buddha. Listen, nobody want to see Buddha, amen, walking around the beach. But, but that's another story. Listen, catch this, catch this, catch this. He says, he says, he says, and we exhort you, brothers and sisters. So Paul is saying that the body, that the people in the house of God have have a responsibility to one another. It's not just the pastor job to give you some get right. You got to have some folk in your life, amen, who can look at you and know that you're off, amen, and give you some get right and give you a good dose of get yourself together. I'm from North St. Louis. I got some partners who never left the street. They didn't did real time. They, they have, listen, I got some amazing friends at home. Now, they ain't saved. I call them amazing because this is why I call them amazing. Like one of my partners got like a 12-year walk. That's a 12-year prison bid. And, and, and so he walking around. I say, so, man, when you going to serve? He says, well, my day is like August 31st, 2022. I say, so they going to come get you? He said, no, I'm going to drive and turn myself in. I said, make sure you understand. They gave you 12 years, and you're going to drive to the jail, knock on the gate and tell them I'm here, and then sit down and do your time. He said, oh, yeah. I said, I wanted to say this, but I didn't want to be part of, I didn't want to be, I didn't want to catch a case for aiding and abetting. I wanted to say, man, don't you know I'm trying to get to Jamaica right about now? Ain't no way I'm going to turn myself in. But, 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 but here's the deal. Here's the deal. The other dudes are driving him to drop him off. Because they say, listen, you did the crime, now go sit down and do the time, and we got you while you locked up. Why is it that people in the street, amen, got, 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 got each other back more than people in the church? The whole time he did his bid, amen, they made sure his kids ate. The whole time he did his bid, amen, they paid his house note. The whole time he did his bid, amen, they kept putting money on his commissary, amen. All I was sending to do was Bible verses. I was like, check this one out. Write me back. 
Amen. <laughs> I told my children, you go to jail, that's where you're going to be. Amen. All I got for you is more Bible. Amen. But look what he says. Look what he says. Look what he says. Paul uses the term brethren or, 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 or to a beloved brothers and sisters, but brethren some 27 times. Amen. To refer to how we're supposed to do life together. And in and, and all of his writing, he's over 60 times, he's talking to those in the pew, admonishing them, amen, to be the church that God has called them to be. So look here, when he uses the word, warn the idol, right? Just so we're clear, idol means unruly or people who are out of line. When somebody gets out of line, amen, your job is to warn them. Your job is to admonish them. Your job is to encourage them to get back in line. Amen. When I was in the Army, one of the easiest ways you could get, you could get in trouble is what we call getting out of ranks, meaning, mean, meaning you fell out the formation, meaning, meaning, meaning you weren't where you were supposed to be, meaning you was doing your own thing. Amen. And somebody would report that you were out of line. Amen. This was necessary because the out of line person could cause damage to the morale of the whole unit. When unruly people go unchallenged, it leads to disruption in the church and in houses. And that's how you get church splits and full and, and divorces because you're out of line and nobody's willing to tell you you're out of line. I tell the leaders all the time, if I'm out of line, tell me I'm out of line. If I say something crazy in service, when I, by the time I get home, my wife then already corrected me. She says, now, now, now baby, you could have said it like this, could have said it like that. And before my mama died, she was saying, now, don't ever say that again. <laughs> so, so, so listen, so, so, so suppose you were driving a car, driving a car behind one of your friends on the road. And you notice, amen, it's late at night, and you notice your friend car began to drift off the road, right? And you see them drifting, 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 drifting. You suspect that they're dozing off. What do you do? Do you simply pull off on the side and, and, uh, of the road, or do you interfere? Do you start blowing your horn? Do you start warning them? That's what it means. It means that when you see somebody, amen, falling off, you start, you, you start sounding the alert, amen. You start calling out to them, amen. You, 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 you start trying to get their attention. Like when you see a kid running out in traffic, what do you do, amen? You shout. You run. You start hollering. You're trying to get their attention. Why? Because you don't want them to mess their lives up. Amen. You don't want them to mess their lives up. So he says, warn them not to be unruly, right? Then, 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 then look what he says here. He, he had already covered this because in the previous chapter, he says about brotherly love, don't, he says, you don't, you don't mind me to write you because yourselves are taught to love one another, right? And then he tells them to live a quiet life and mind your own business and to work with your own hands as you command. And so he's telling them, listen, warn them to live a certain kind of way. Then he tells them to comfort the discouraged. Can I say this? If you keep living, you're going to have some days of discouragement. None of us can escape it. None of us can escape it. Let me, let me pause right here. Mental health is real. And sometimes you can't pray it away. Sometimes you need to go see a doctor. Get some help, amen. But sometimes you're just discouraged. And the Bible says that we ought to comfort one another in these days. Amen. There, there, there are those in the body that from time to time need an, that need an extra push. Amen. They, 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 they've become faint hearted, as some translation says. It refers to a saint who's ready to quit and give up. Y'all know why I'm here pastoring, y'all? Because Fanny Williams... Ruth, Mr. and Mrs. Rayborn would not give up on me. And because Dale Lee kept praying. When my wife got saved, I terrorized her. I terrorized her. Because I was used to living one way, and she was upsetting the whole, I mean, she was upsetting the whole ecosystem of the Lee household. But she kept on praying. She kept believing that God one day would grab my heart, even on the day that I went to the church to get with the preacher. Because I told you I like to fight. I said, if I just go and drop these hands on him or worse, amen, this is settled. This here. If I, listen, I'll call the preacher out. If I beat you, she can stay. Amen. But if you beat me, I'm going to come. But I heard the gospel and got saved. And then after I heard the gospel, there were days when I wanted to quit because I didn't understand church. In fact, I'm just honest, I ain't even like church folk. I just didn't like church folk. 
Because I didn't realize that church folk were hypocrites. Oh, they got quiet. They got quiet. Come on, come on, Eddie. Get on the keys. Help them out. They got quiet. Listen, 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 listen. The church is full of hypocrites in this very moment. We all acting. We all acting like we got it together when we know we're struggling through something. Mm -hmm. And if we would be real with a, another brother and sister, man, we could get some help. Ain't no shame in my game. I'm struggling. I'm coming to tell y'all. Hey, listen, pray for me. Listen, 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 listen. I'm looking right now. Hey, Amen. And make if, if my car note three, three notes behind, I'm parking by the door of the car. I'm going to make it hard for the tow truck to get my car. Then I'm going to come talk to some of y'all who like to bless for. I'm just telling you, hey, amen. Listen, listen. But he says, he says, comfort the discouraged. In other words, go to them, amen. Be a brother or sister. Listen to their problems. Listen again. Say, I'm here to walk with you. And no matter how long it takes, be committed, amen, to walking with that brother or sister until they come out on the other side. Then he says, help the weak. This literally means don't let them fall. Don't let them fall. Paul is referring to those who are struggling and growing in godliness. Not the physical week, but the spiritual week. Beloved, listen, you can use your phone for good. Some of y'all only use your phone to gossip, but I'm telling you, you can use it for good. Amen. Instead of texting uh, somebody's business, you can call that person and say, how can I help you, my sister or my brother? Use your phone for good, amen. Let me tell you a little secret. I got some folk to testify. If you bring me some dirt on somebody, I'm going to be listening. I'm going to be playing with you. I'm playing the game. Now, when I see them in church on Sunday and we get together, I'm saying, now, nah, sister so-and-so, you know what you told me about sister so-and-so? <laughs> and then I'm going to walk away. I'm going to let y'all work that out. Ask, hey, listen. Hey, listen. You can ask some people. I do this all the time. Hey, Amen. Listen. Listen. I am not a trash can. Hey, Amen. You can't come dump on me. Hey, Amen. Listen, you can't come dump on me. I'm, listen, I'm a dump truck. I'm finna put it back on you. Amen. <laughs> but I'm gonna I'm bring y'all together because the Bible says that, that y'all can do, y'all are better together than if y'all got me involved. And so look what he says. He says, help the weak, right? Help the weak. I know some of y'all say, Pastor, this is a big ax, right? You don't know how people are. You don't, know, you don't know the foolishness and the mess. And I've tried all I can to be true. But we are to admonish and to make every effort to build one another up in love and admonishment. Listen, there was these Christians. They were held in a Japanese prison. And the guards would beat them and ridicule them every day for confessing to be Christians. And one day, they finally broke, broke, broke the leader. The guard stripped him and chained him to a pole in the hot sun. And the man, the man was at his breaking point, and he decided he would hold his breath and die. Just then, another prisoner drew a cross in the dirt to remind him of his Christian faith. And it encouraged him so much, he kept fighting. Sometimes all somebody needs is a text that says, I'm praying for you. All somebody needs is for you to take them to lunch. All somebody needs, hey amen, is, 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 is to know, is for you to invite them over, right? He wraps up with this here. We'll go home with this. Here's what I'm encouraging you to do. I'm encouraging you to be a graceful people. Listen, we all, we, we all are walking with a limp. We all are wounded. We, we, we all got something that we're dealing with. Uh, listen, none of us, listen, listen. The, 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 the lives you see people have on TV, those are curated lives. They, those are scripts. That's not reality. But in reality, amen, we all got something that we're dealing with, and we need brothers and sisters in the faith to have amazing and, 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 and unending grace towards us, to live with us, to love us, amen, to lead us, amen, to be there for us. Listen, I need somebody in my corner. That's what, that's what it means to be a grace-filled people. I'm willing to be in your corner even though I know you're dead wrong. And I'm going to walk with you from being dead wrong to right. I'm, I, listen, I'm going to be your spiritual scarecrow. I'm going to ward off all the drama until you can get yourself together. That's what it means. That's what it means. And let me apologize to you if you're a member of this church and you've not experienced that. That means we failed. You as a brother and sister in the Lord, as, as pastors, elders, and deacons. 
But, but, but that's our heart's desire is that nobody would stand alone in their pain and in their failure and in their discomfort and in their weak moments and in their confused times that the church would really be a church where you can get help. You say, okay, pastor, what's it going to take? Paul tells us right here. Look here. In this last verse, we're going to look at it. Then we're going to go and roll to the crib. Look what he says. His last, this last statement, he says, be patient with everyone. Be patient with everyone. Here's what he's telling us. He's telling us, don't give up. Keep on praying. Hold out. Be patient with everyone. Right? He says, we're called to a work of prayer and patience. That's how we extend grace with people. How many times should I forgive that person? Seven times seven? And seven times seven, if you got to do it again, amen. How many times has God forgiven you? There's a story about a man who stopped at a grocery store on his way home. He had this little boy in the basket. And just like a grocery store, you probably know as you go up and down aisles, you begin to see the same people over and over and over and over again. As if you, 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 you know them. Well, he kept passing the little boy, and the, and the first time he passed, the little boy was crying, and he was hollering out he wanted candy. He passed the little boy and his dad in another aisle, the little boy was crying, and hollering out he wanted cereal. He finally got to the cash register with the little boy, and the man was watching him, and he noticed that the little boy, please, had increased, and he, he had got louder and louder and louder. And then finally, they checked out. He still had no evidence that this man had not lost his cool with the little boy. So he followed the man out to the car, and he said, Sir, I've just witnessed the most remarkable thing I've ever saw. Your child was kicking and screaming, and all you kept saying was, In a minute, Billy. In a minute, Billy. It's going to be all right, Billy. In a minute, Billy. The bystander was so impressed with his words, amen, that, that, that they said, man, how did you do it? And the man looked at him, put his hand on his shoulder. He says, you don't understand that I'm Billy. That's going to land on some of y'all when y'all get home. <laughs> how do you learn patience? Is that you put yourself in a situation to just walk with a person over and over and over and over and over again. The same way God has been patient with us, we have to be patient with one another. This is a house that is full of grace, mercy, and truth. And if we don't get anything else right, we have to get love, grace, mercy, and truth right. We're going to miss it sometimes. But if we keep on loving, we keep showing mercy to, to each other, we keep extending grace, the truth of who God is, amen, will be revealed not just in our words, but in how we live. So if you're here this morning and you've never experienced the grace of God, you've never experienced the grace-filled people, first and foremost, I want to extend you an invitation to come to know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. Jesus calls us to follow him. Today can be your day. Listen, and here's, and, and, and here's let me tell you, let me tell you, you're going to wake up tomorrow, you're going to look at your hands, they're not going to look new. But you have, you'd, have, you'd have made a quality decision to start a lifelong journey that will forever change your life. We want to extend your invitation, amen, to give your life to Christ. Because he really can make you brand new from the inside out. But then, if you're already a believer, we want to extend your invitation to be part of this place, this church, Higher Expectations Community Church, where we believe that we are a grace-filled people, loving one another through the good and through the bad. So with every eye closed, every head bowed, let me pray with us this morning. Father, we thank you. We praise you and magnify you. We honor you so much, God. We thank you for your word because we know it's true. God, there might be somebody among us today, God, Father, who's ready to take the step of faith. They're ready to say, listen, I'm all messed up, Pastor. I'm like you. I need Jesus. 
to that person, I simply would say, you can stand where you at. We won't, we, we won't put you on blast. We ain't going to put a camera in your face, a, 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 a mic in your hand. But you can stand where you at as an acknowledgement, I want to surrender my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you don't have a church home, you're, you're not covered by some loving elders and deacons and pastors and saints. We want to extend you an invitation to be part of this family. We're not perfect but we'll do our best to love you like Christ has called us to love you. So if you're here, amen, today's your day. We thank you and we praise you, God, for all that you've done today. We pray that our hearts are lifted. We pray, God, that we get to walk with you and be all that you called us to be. Help us as we leave this place to be a grace-filled people we pray in Jesus' name. And the people of God said amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand of praise.